Hey guys, this is Larry. I'm the owner and head engineer of Bigfoot Studios, based in Rome, right in front of the Vatican, and uh, we provide uh, mixing, mastering, and production services. Um, today I'm starting this uh, series of tutorials, really short, really quick, on some insights of uh, audio processing and uh, and audio engineering. Um, in this episode, we'll, we're going to cover uh, the process of clipping. Um, now, I chose two really different uh, tracks. One is a more um, glitchtronica sort of uh, ambient type of track, and the other one is a really hard banging EDM track. Um, what is clipping? That's the most important thing. Clipping is, um, well, clipping is a process initially. Uh, it is a, an, a full analog process that was done with hardware gear and uh, really expensive converters. So a signal coming out of a really expensive uh, EQ or a compressor would feed the input stage of the of a really expensive uh, a really expensive AD converter, uh, such as probably the Lavery Gold, the Lavery Blue, uh, the Prisms, or um, whatever, even expensive Apogees and so on. Um, really expensive converters, uh, when clipped, so when the signal goes above the 0 dB ceiling, um, tend to produce a sort of harmonic uh, distortion, a harmonic flavor to the track, which can be, if you know, well-balanced and well-treated, can be really helpful in order to raise... Um, the perceived loudness of your track, as well as enriching the harmonic content. Uh, not only when clipped, uh, the converter will would tame out some of the transients, uh, creating overs. Now, since uh, analog gear and really ex um, really expensive converters are not affordable for uh, all of the people, um, plugin manufacturers decided to emulate those processes, and by Emulating those processes, they created some really cool plugins. Like uh, in this case, I, I, I'm utilizing the SIR uh, standard clip from S uh, SIR Audio Tools and the Event Horizon, um, and these two, uh, they sound quite different um, because. Uh, one is the, the emulation of uh, sort of the Lavery Gold, while the other one is a more transparent, more um, open-sounding clipper. Uh, I will show you the two different use of these two tools. Although they do the same thing, uh, you have always have to keep in mind that character is important is an important aspect of of each tool you got. So uh, it's important that we understand the theory behind every tool that we have. We listen because listening is always a crucial uh, part of mastering, because without the listening stage, uh, we take the wrong decisions. And um, after that, given, given the set of tools that we have, the, we can then move on and choose the one that suits the most the, the choice that we're going to make. So, enough talking. I will show you how I utilize the um, uh, standard clip in this glitchtronic track by Derry Bryan, and um, it goes through a limiting stage. I usually put a deesser after it because you know some some high frequencies that really tend to pop up sometimes, but that's really uh, a, a mellow compression around 1.5 dB, nothing crazy. And um, I will show you how it works with and without the um, uh, the limiting stage. And uh, yep. Yeah, I will I will just dive into it so you can listen.
as you heard, uh, this process increased the gain, of course, because the perceived loudness and the actual loudness are are higher. Um, in order to uh, avoid the typical uh, trick that what's louder sounds better, I will match the gains so you can hear what actually the clipping stage is adding to the signal at matched gain. So we're pushing 40 Bs into the virtual converter and then we're taking 40 Bs out of it. So you'll hear how it sounds with and without the clipper at the same volume. As you could see also from the meter, uh, some of the really uh, of the really high transients were uh, tamed a little bit, and this would cause would cause overs over the um, over the signal. And uh, as you could hear, probably it would add uh, a slight mid rangey sort of distortion, very musical, uh, very useful, and. Um, I really like this approach because um, uh, in this case it gives me some loudness just by pushing some gain and adding some extra distortion so the track feels a bit louder as well in terms of um, perceived loudness. Now I will show you with the, uh, with the loudness meter, with the dynamic range meter, what happens to the signal um, when a limiting chain is on and the clipper comes in. So this is a normal limiting chain, nothing crazy. And uh, we'll listen to the track with and without the, the clipper. Okay, so let's have a listen. <laughs> Okay, so you got the idea. Of course, it's a really gentle push. If you could, if you can see, I'm not clipping the hell out of it because that's not my intention, of course. And also, um, it works really well with limiters because it actually enables the limiter to work way less. So if we look at the limiting stage. <laughs> I'm not pushing more than one dB and a half. So, and of course, this track doesn't need extreme loudness because it's a really mellow track. So I wanted to keep it that way, but it was used in a really musical way. After this, I provide you with another example where uh, I use the, the clipper in a more extreme way in the in an EDM banging track, um, and as you will hear. Um, this this process was used in a really uh, extreme way. I pushed I pushed it way more in this case, and uh, but it, it gave it a lot of more punch, a lot of more um, impact to the track. And um, now we'll we'll take a listen and uh, uh, you tell me what you think about it also in the comments. And uh, this is the Event Horizon. Um, and this this one is is really is really good because I I really enjoy using it. Um, actually, bought the plugin. I don't know why it says here. Uh, looks like Dave Pensado had the same problem while <laughs> shooting the tour to the tutorial. Uh, Stillwell Audio did an amazing job in in actually emulating the uh, Lavery Gold uh, type of tone in terms of clipping. So here I went for a three point five um, gain addition. Uh, within in, in the virtual A to D stage with some 
with an, a DB of uh, soft clip. Make sure to enable the clip mode, okay? Um, now I will show you uh, the actual um, signal coming out of the event horizon without uh, any processing after it. Just again, a little bit of de -essing, but that's not gonna impact the sound massively. So let's take a listen. As you could hear, uh, the increase in vo volume is significant. It added a lot of uh, punch to the track while also adding some low mid bottom to it. Now, if we take a look on how this uh, clipper interacts with the limiting stage, you'll be surprised how much loudness we can achieve in this case for an EDM track. And um, it will really um, pop out of the speakers in a, in a way. And this is a really a useful tool that um, all audio engineers utilize and is one of the secret weapons. So, as you saw, this has a lot of clarity and mid-punch to the track and uh, it's really musical in this regard, but it doesn't over-compress the sound. And of course, this music, this kind of EDM is uh, widely known for its compression stages and it's sort of a, um, a widely known topic among the uh, audio engineering community. Uh, audio, um, EDM tracks have the tendency to be quite loud in terms of RMS and dy dynamic range uh, with really low dynamic range because there's a lot of elements pumping into drop but in this case we avoided a lot of compression by just um, going into the clipper in a really this is a, in a, a more extreme way of going into the clipper but just adding gain and some harmonic distortion Another trick that I like to use uh, most of the time is probably limit a little bit the signal before going to the clipper. Uh, this is because it helps the the um, to, uh, it helps the clipper to um, have an even a more even signal in terms of uh, transients. So if there are any transients popping out, the limiter would have at least tamed it a little bit and pushed it back a little down a little bit while aiming for the um, leaving the, the the clipper to operate in a more uh, linear way in terms of spikes and peaks in the in the actual signal. Um, I thank you for your attention. Uh, this was really nice. I mean, we're experiencing a really uh, weird period. We're all in lockdown, so I I I hope you can um, grab some knowledge out of it and uh, have fun. Experiment with uh, with parameters, with plugins, and uh, keep it keep it one hundred. You know, you have to you have to work work hard to only in order to get the uh, desired results in audio. So um, 
there's no golden rule. That's my approach to it. Uh, feel free to send me some, uh, some messages, leave some comments, and of course, um, test uh, the plugins uh, that uh, you, will, you will use and uh, throughout the, the different sessions and um, have fun with it. So, happy lockdown. I know it's, uh, it's a weird period for all, all of us, but we're going to go through this. And uh, since we're audio nerds, we're kind of, kind of used to quarantine, right? Ciao.